because we work in quite a few sectors we might be approached about a project where we haven't got much experience in that sector so that I think often makes clients a bit nervous even though the process is often the same it's not we haven't specifically got yeah. work in that sector so you know sometimes that can be an advantage because they're actually looking for you know fresh eyes and then sometimes it just you know they make them a bit nervous because they they haven't you know they're not seeing exactly the same yeah. thing in your portfolio so um a few times that whether we've ended up getting the job they've actually then i think been really kind of pleased that they've gone with an agency who can bring a fresh take on it Hello and welcome to episode five of Creative Minds. I am joined uh, this week by Charlie Smith of Charlie Hi. Smith Design, <laughs> and we're going to chat about all things creative. Charlie, welcome to the show. Great, thanks for having me. James. Um, how did you come up with the name of the agency? Well, tricky one. Well, I guess in the beginning, I just thought I was going to sort of be freelance. So I thought it seems yeah. a bit weird as a freelancer to name yourself something else, and then. I gradually got projects in and clients and then it felt a bit too late. So I kind of got stuck committed. with it. Yeah. I thought about changing the name over the years, but then I don't know, we sometimes call ourselves sort of just CSD and shorten it. Right. But yeah, kind of stuck with it. And 20 years later, pretty much 20 years, yeah, to the day almost. Oh, really? Yeah, which wow. Which crazy. So it's been going a long time. Now it's just, you know, you can't really change it now. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 20 years. Congra congratulations. Yeah, I know. So it's kind of just flown. Yeah. Wind the clock back. So you started 20 years ago, but what what brought you to the point to get to starting the um, the agency? Well, I guess, so I'd worked previously kind of for four years before that. So started at Pentagram for Angus Highland for a few years, then worked at MV Studio for a bit, and then actually took a year off to go traveling. Right. And so we sort of went around, spent a year in South America, and then towards, the, it was sort of an amazing timing, towards the end of my trip, I got approached about a couple of jobs, and I was sort of... I'm still traveling, but I'm back in three weeks and can oh, do wow. some work. And it literally just like three jobs kind of landed in wow. my lap almost. It was kind of amazing. So you could just great, yeah. get back and hit the ground running. Yeah. And so I never, actually, I never planned to start a business or start up a studio. It just, I thought I'd come back and freelance for a bit. And then I had these three projects sort of straight away. And it literally just kind of, you know, grew organically from that. So, right. Yeah. So, so I mean, it sounds it. very easy. I'm not sure I where know, I can yeah. go with that. <laughs> when did it feel like you'd? switch from freelance to actually kind of running a an agency even though it was obviously started small I mean the thing is I technically I ever I've never actually freelanced so that was the plan when I came back to kind of approach you know other design studios and and then literally I had these two projects I mean I didn't even know how to write a proposal at the beginning. I mean it was I was so sort of I just been a designer really so I had never got involved in proposal writing or all the admin side of running a business so yeah, I kind of just that was a massive learning curve all that stuff and I did it totally wrong at the beginning and you know charge way too little and we you know spent way too much time and stay up till midnight doing the proposals yeah. and all that sort of thing because I just didn't really know what I was doing I knew how to do well you know I knew how to do the design stuff because that's the bit that I've been doing but you know all the business side was a bit more challenging because I guess that's well I presume that's not taught at design college. No, I don't. I mean, you don't, you know, or I feel like even in sort of schools and stuff, you should learn more about sort of day-to-day -day management of things and finances and stuff. But yeah, so I didn't really know. I mean, I picked up, I guess, bits just from listening in or being part of a design team, but never really, you know, written proposals or anything. So it was a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a learning curve at so the beginning. So looking back to some of those early proposals, is it quite... Yeah, pretty. You know, you sort of they were probably a bit woolly, but kind of you know didn't really. But you, you need pick stuff up as you go, and then you chat yeah. to people, and then you know friends who are doing similar thing. Oh yeah, you know, have a, you know you chat about the process, and I guess you learn as you go, don't you? And then yeah, but great, you were able to kick off with some clients. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing, really. I mean, I think I was sort of right place, right time. Really, I was very lucky that these kind of great projects sort of came in and. Yeah, just sort of went from there. So, so can you remember what the projects were, that first one? Yeah, so one was um, an identity for an architecture practice. Um, one was a website for a kind of furniture designer. And then another one was doing a sort of project for the V&A, which oh, wow. with a, someone I met at Pentagram, basically, who kind of does exhibitions. And I'm still working with today, actually. So we've done a lot of kind of projects together over the last 20 years. So she just approached me and said, I'm doing an exhibition at V&A. Do you want to do the... You know the book and the exhibition graphics. I was just like, sure. 
<laughs> you wow. know. Wow. And actually, that's the what kind of work I've been doing at Pentagram anyway. So I was sort of, you know, it was sort of work that was familiar to me, but obviously it was kind of me as, you know, as the studio kind of thing. So I had these amazing projects at the beginning. And then, you know, that was probably, th you know, three or four months work yeah. sort of straight off. And then it kind of just sort of grew from there, really. Yeah. But, and I guess your work must have spoken for itself. So the client got in touch and, and off you went. Yeah, I guess we'd sort of had quite a good working relationship when I'd been at Pentagram. And then, you know, she, yeah, and we just sort of got on really well. And then it kind of grew from there, really. And like I said, it's been 20 years of collaborating, you know, on lots of different projects. So, yeah, it's been, that's been really nice, actually. And I've, I've always enjoyed working with clients kind of repeatedly and yeah. on multiple projects. And you sort of just get to know them and, you know, kind of become friends in a way and, you know, collaborate on lots of things. How important is that? deeper relationship or client relationship with to, to get to you know within the creative process and to do better work I've been very lucky that we've had lots of clients that we've ended up working with for a few years on like multiple projects and I mean I kind of enjoy that because you I guess over time you get to know well if they're part of a bigger organization you get to know like the ethos of the company really well you kind of you know you end up working quite collaboratively which I really enjoy and I think it sort of ultimately makes for better work or in my you know in my experience it has um and they sort of sometimes clients have really pushed us and you kind of end up getting it to a better place so um I really enjoy that collaborative process and getting to know people quite well and it's sort of more than just a kind of client relationship you actually you know get on really well and yeah. enjoy meetings and I don't know yeah it's good I enjoy that kind of process of working with people you know in an ongoing basis I mean even just hearing you talk now Charlie you've got kind of a feels like a love and a passion for it are you are you still in love with the craft do you yeah yeah you know, your job title is creative director yeah how much work are you doing and how much of that are you loving my role has sort of evolved a bit so in the beginning I was I guess the first let me think the first couple of years it was just me so I was doing all the sort of design side and the proposal sides and the admin side which and I found I didn't really enjoy all the, it's just not my strength, that kind of, you know, organizational yeah, side. Same and, for me. <laughs> you know, it's just not what I, you know, and so I, I almost ended up slightly resenting the design side as well, because I was trying to squeeze that in to get the other stuff done. Right. And so actually over time, it's I've, like I employed a project manager about God, 10 years ago, and that was almost a game changer for me. It was almost like I could really get back to the bit that I love doing, mm. which is the design side. And I guess over the years, as I've employed more people, um, you're kind of less hands-on in terms of actually designing. But because we're still a small team, I've, I get to oversee everything. And I feel very closely connected to all the work, even though I'm not, a lot of the time, I'm not actually hands-on designing. But I'm kind of very closely overseeing everything. So it's sort of, I guess my role has changed a bit, but I still feel like I'm doing the creative work every day somehow, even though it's That's nice. more of a sort of overarching thing I guess and and you're enjoying that yeah I mean I to be honest I almost prefer this part now because I love collaborating with people not just clients but with my team as well so it's that thing that you know you both kind of brainstorm and you by working with someone else you sort of get it to a better place I think so mm. I enjoy that kind of I guess working partnership a bit with designers and you know with the sort of wider team and if we take you know working with copywriters or photographers or illustrators just sort of that, you know, more people involved and just I think that collaborative process is, yeah, I mean, it's almost the bit that I enjoy the most, actually. Yeah. What what do you feel makes a, the collaborative process? I mean, it's something that you've already touched on a couple mm. of times there. What makes a successful collaborative process? Because some people will do their best work when they get their head down and, you know, go away and work on something yeah. and come back. Seems like you're more in the other camp and it's more about collaboration. So what works best for you and what would you recommend for people that want to collaborate more I said I guess you've got to be quite open to working that way and not being too precious about your own kind of ideas or your own vision for it so um yeah often and the designs I work with in our studio they you know we've been working together a really long time so you kind of intuitively know how each other works and what people's strengths and I guess the areas they enjoy so you kind of you know, we all have slightly different skill sets, I guess. So you, I guess you kind of work to people's strengths a bit. And I think we all, as a team, we all really enjoy working collectively rather than sort of too much in isolation. I guess that's a sort of personal thing, isn't it? But mm. um, I don't know if I'm really an answer to your question. I don't know what makes it sort of most successful. I think it's just being, yeah, not being too precious, really, I guess, and kind of be willing to kind of, you know, often like 
what I'm thinking isn't necessarily the right answer. And it's kind of, you know, actually just going, okay, yeah, fair enough. That's, you know, I think that's not the best way to approach it. Let's try something else. And I think just being quite open-minded, I guess. If you're in a scenario and you think, okay, your approach might not have been best, and it sounds like you've kind of are open to that, but your name is going on that work. You need to yeah. put your stamp of approval you know, as Charlie Smith yeah, and yeah. as the creative director. How do you cope when there's something that you don't necessarily think is right, but the team might all be behind it, the client might like it, but you're perhaps not sure? I think if everyone else is behind it, the client and everyone in the studio is behind it, then you just have to go, okay, well, you know, I'm not always right. And actually, you know, maybe, yeah. So you, I think I would then go with the majority totally. But I mean, in terms of, yeah, my name is on the door, so to speak, and everything going out the studio, I've got to be kind of, you know, be able to stand behind. So if there's something that I don't think is, I don't know, right or the right sort of solution to the brief, then I will, you know, I'll sort of put my foot down, I guess, or well, not put my foot down, but you know what I mean? I'll kind of, we'll relook at it and we'll maybe go back a bit, go back a stage and just mm. make sure that actually it's the best solution. Um, so yeah, because you don't, you just don't want to put work out there, do you, that you think isn't, isn't right. Isn't yeah. right. So, or that you're not proud of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So generally I'm, you know, proud of pretty, you know, everything that we put out there. I mean, so yeah, so I think um, yeah, you've got to be behind it and if it's not right, got to kind of call it out, I guess. But yeah, if everyone else just thinks it's great and I'm a bit unsure, then I'll, I will totally kind of sit back and go, okay, you know. Yeah, trust you on this one, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. I mean, talking about work that you're proud of, is there something over the kind of 20-year period of of the agency being running that you're, that you're most proud of? I guess sort of in a more overarching way, I kind of, I like that we haven't been pigeonholed into one sector. So we've continued to do exhibition staff as well as kind of restaurant work, and then kind of more kind of high end sort of identities or, you know, we've, we've done a whole breadth of work and I kind of like that we've done things in different sectors. And obviously, it's, I guess sometimes some of the more challenging projects are ones you can, uh, where the process has been hard or the brief itself has been a bit tricky, you kind of, when you know that you've done a good job for that, you kind mm. of feel, I guess, quite proud that you've sort of managed to reach Went a, good, a yeah, yeah. good solution. but. We did a lot of work for Byron, sort of back in the day, and that oh, was the, great. the burger, Byron yeah, sort of ten, about ten years ago. Um, they were great, yeah. and we did about work for them for about seven years. Okay, and I was really proud of a lot of the work we did, and so, you know we were doing things like signage and stuff, which we'd never done before initially. So you know you just have to kind of learn a whole new mm. kind of way of working. And so, what did it start with a sort of brand identity for them, and then that. So we else. slightly inherited from kind of another designer, sort of they'd done a rebrand and it was sort of very much a, um, it didn't really have strict brand guidelines. It was actually meant to be quite fluid. And I guess there was lots of, um, they had about, f you know, four or five different logos and there was no set color palette, no set typefaces. And, you know, it was all very yeah. open. So it was very much, you know. Was that a good thing or a bad thing to work uh, with? I think it took a bit of time to kind of get into the swing of it actually, but then, Actually, then it really became a really creative process with um, the kind of brand manager at the time who was there with the architects kind of the, and the interior designer working on the signage. Um, so it was a very collaborative process with the clients as well. So um, I really enjoyed that sort of t work and that period of time that we worked on that because it, I think we produced some you know, work that I was very proud of and actually our client really sort of pushed us and challenged us and was you know really kind of astute on typography and so you mm. know you were kind of you know calling us out a bit if they didn't think it was yeah. right or like the subtleties of the typefaces weren't right or and it was really really kind of good working relationship I guess and then that just yeah. elevates the work and yeah you and then you're just and constantly it's... striving to do better work I guess there's lots of things over the years that I've been proud of um which I think more recently a bit of a blank of <laughs> I have to cut this bit out um actually I think you know some we've done some charity projects that you know where it's been a sort of small budget and you've got to kind of make it kind of make it mm. work um I think we worked with Cadogan Estate for about eight years and done all sorts of different hoardings and you know annual reports and websites and it's I guess a bit more kind of commercial work but I feel like we've pushed it into quite a creative place and work very collaboratively with the client there and often work a lot with illustrators it's nice when you can work with a, a client even if they're you know slightly more corporate yeah and then over time just gently gently push them offer up more creative yeah. solutions to problems and then when they when they go for it 
and you've slightly like moved the dial and the type of work that they put out it's really rewarding isn't it definitely and actually they then start looking at the briefs differently as well and they want to kind of go on that journey a bit with you so yeah it's quite absolutely it's nice when you move them I guess into a different place yeah and then they get excited by kind of like oh, yeah maybe we should use illustration for this or maybe we could do something mm. you know kind of more dynamic or and you know and you're just like okay you know you've, yeah. you've sort of moved like you say I guess sort of move the goalposts a bit which is which is really enjoyable and that's I guess the benefit of a long-term relationship is you can kind of you know in a way encourage them to be a bit braver and a bit bolder with things and then they start seeing it differently and I guess yeah over time you're kind of going on that journey with them I guess which is enjoyable. So Charlie talk me through your kind of creative process do you does the agency have a set process or does you approach briefs differently each time how does it work? Um, I guess we sort of have a process in that we sort of myself and Hannah, my project manager, will meet the client initially. Um, and I guess once the project's been signed off, uh, we'll sort of sit down with the designer or whether it's one or two designers working on it and kind of probably initially kind of brainstorm it a bit. And then, you know, they'll maybe go off and do a bit of research. And then we'll, we, I mean, we check in all the time and kind of work very collaboratively on it. Um, I wouldn't say that's necessarily a set process. I mean, often I like at the beginning, us to really kind of push it as far as we can and try lots of different, just try loads of different things, mm. things that maybe, you know, don't necessarily seem right. Maybe they're too too much, but it's almost better to kind of start wider, I think. And then I find in and terms is that, of... Is the client brought in at that stage or not are you the, kind of doing it internally? I'm doing it internally. And I think because when you're not actually designing it yourself and you're, you're kind of, I guess, being the creative director. I found it much easier to work with the designers when, if they pushed it quite a lot, and it's like because you could see bits, things they may have discounted. You then can just see things in that, and mm. I think I find that an easier way to work. So we generally kind of try lots of things, push it quite far, um, and you know sometimes kind of work on kind of mood boards as well, sort of internally, just to I don't know, scope out different territories and. You know, try, I guess have a. I guess we do have a bit of a process, and then we would always narrow it down to kind of a few routes before we'd share with the clients. I guess the temptation is showing the client all these different routes, which sometimes people can find a bit overwhelming. Yeah. How how do you deal with that? Do you just select a few or just hero one? I mean, we work with different clients in slightly different ways. I mean, we never. I know there's there's prob probably a confidence in showing one. We never show one. We usually would show three probably. Um, maybe even four, depending on what we've kind right. of agreed. But I just think often to, if you just show one and then they don't like, well, like it, like you're stuff. like, where yeah. do you go, I guess. Yeah. But even if there's one that you feel kind of much more confident in, sometimes it's good to show a couple of others to show why that one is right. definitely yeah. the best solution, yeah. I guess. So it's almost, cannon fodder. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Or often, you know, they, they don't totally know what they want anyway. So you kind of need to show something that's maybe, there's a sort of, this is a safer one, but yeah. then you show them a couple of sort of slightly bolder, ones or slightly more I and guess how often do, this, do the clients say oh we want a bit of that and a bit of that oh every time <laughs> <laughs> every time yeah that's part of the process isn't yeah. it yeah which generally is sort of when they're first saying it you're like oh god you know and then actually work through it and you do generally land in sort of some you know a better place I think you know because maybe I don't know when you've, you go through the process a bit more but yeah every time without doubt it's it's a bit of everything isn't it yeah something that we've started to do recently at Bear Jam is have a kind of um once we've delivered a project and it's done signed off we do a bit of a what we call a creative wrap up yeah and we get the team the internal team that's worked on it together and we're kind of have a look at the proposal have a look at an early edit or and then the final version do you do anything like that is there any how do you kind of learn from previous um, work i guess we probably should do a bit more of that i mean generally we you know, every so often we'll sit down because like, there might have been like a designer because, you know, half our team work remotely as well. So we're not always in the same room at the same time. So, you know, sometimes a designer or two designers are working on a project and the other designer won't have seen much of it. So often we sit down then almost sort of a bit of right. a show and tell, I guess, yeah. and maybe do a bit of that as part of that process. And sort of, you know, because almost by talking through the brief and the first concepts and then where you landed and what the client thought, you kind of... I guess there's a bit of like, oh yeah, maybe next time we should think about doing it slightly differently or, you know, learnings, I guess, from clients. So we don't have an official thing, I guess we do, but we do often talk about that sort of thing just to, like you say, to sort of where did, if things didn't go quite to plan, 
how do you improve it for next time? So what are the learnings? Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I don't know. If you're the same. You're then if you're busy, you're on to the next thing. That's and then, it. it's, it's, you know, it's like making the time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's kind one of, of those regroup. things. Yeah, you've got to make the time to to actually do it, and everyone commit to it. And yeah. then you know, hopefully, you, you kind of get out what you put into it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and if that's a quick half effort, you're not going to yeah. get. Yeah, like I say, it doesn't need to be it. that long, does it? You could just sit down and just for an hour and really go through it. it doesn't need to be a yeah. hugely lengthy process, I guess. But so how how do you find managing a a creative team obviously you kind of got into um got, got into it to do the work yeah you've now got a team to manage sounds like some are remote some you work with kind of face to face is that a part of the job you enjoy yeah definitely I think and I've always been really lucky ever I've had you know obviously over the last how long it's been 20 years or slightly less employing people um I've always had really great employees so you know it's and I think part of that, I guess, slightly not directly answering your question, but part of that is off, I'd say 90% of our people we employ come from interns. They, oh, they wow. start as an intern and then generally stay for like, wow. I don't know, well, one of my designers has been with me for 10 years and he starts, and he's a senior designer now and he starts as an intern. So in some, in some ways it's like you really get to know someone and check that they're the right fit, you know, see if they're mm. the right fit and you can kind of work well together and then they sort of, yeah, stay for for a long time so actually I guess I I enjoy the process of kind of you know we're a bit of a family like a work family I guess without yeah. sounding too kind of corny so yeah I really enjoy the process of managing a team I think partly because they're a really lovely bunch and we all get on really well um, and I think we all know our roles quite well um, and I think also getting a project manager in was for me the best thing that one of the best things I did because it meant that I could actually really focus on the bit I enjoy which is the creative part and collaborating with the designers and you know not have to worry so much about the scheduling and the kind of chasing clients and the invoicing and all of that side which yeah. I just you know I'm it's a full-time job yeah isn't it, it, it is a, totally a full-time job and I actually really enjoy yeah collaborating with my team and kind of I guess I'm not managing a team yeah I guess it's both things but I think because they're such a nice bunch it's sort of they make it very easy if yeah. you know what I mean so yeah I've been touch wood I've been very lucky so someone that you know might be watching, hopefully be watching, yeah. that's thinking about perhaps they're a freelancer and they want to kind of scale it up a little bit and you know create their own agency. I think those first hires or first hire is one of the biggest steps. What advice would you give them? I mean, I should have done it much sooner. So I didn't. I think I was what was it about three years? I was trying to do everything myself, mm. and I actually the thought of taking someone on and thinking about you know, that salary and how was I going to make enough to pay, you know, their salary and things. I procrastinated for so long and I wish I'd sort of done it sooner because actually it would have meant the whole process was, more, you know, I would have enjoyed working more and we probably would have, you know, immediately if you take someone on the, the right fit and it starts working, you can sort of, I guess, do more work and it grows organically and you can start, yeah. you know, looking for those bigger jobs. And I was just barely sort of, you know, staying afloat when it was just me because mm. there was just way too much to do. But I think... So was that first hire for you another designer? Yes. Right. Sort of a junior designer. And then how many designers did you have when it was the right time to bring in that project manager? So I think, well, I kind of, I took on a designer and then I think she was with me for a couple of years. And I actually, because I had my two kids then, so I kind of scaled it back for a bit. And then after that, I think I took on... It was sort of I had two designers and then took on a project manager, um, which actually probably could have been one designer and then a project manager. As soon as you have, you know, a couple of designers or you've, you know, including myself, I guess, mm. you know, you almost need that, you know, management side. I think because um, the admin just comes thick and fast. Snowballs, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I had well, there's myself and two designers and then a project manager, which definitely by the time there's three designers, you need someone on. Well, from my perspective you definitely need otherwise you'd spend all the time looking after yeah. them tracking what they're doing yeah yeah, yeah. Up. and there's you know because immediately when there's three designers you're already doing quite a lot of work so there's already quite a lot of proposals there's you know lots of that admin side happening so mm. yeah i think even yeah two or three i think from my my experience so let's just talk about inspiration charlie where do you go for inspiration for your the work and when you're or if you're stuck, what do you do? Often for me, it's, it is about the collaboration. It is like, 
you know, if you're a bit stuck, we just sort of, you know, chat about it in the studio and kind of, you know, brain, brainstorm. So that process, mm. I think, always helps get through when we're a bit, you know, we're a bit stuck on a project. I guess in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm always going to galleries and doing that sort of thing and, you know, try and go to talks and even just, you know, not doing anything design related for a bit and kind of getting out of, you know, out of London for a bit or whatever, just a different perspective, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess inspiration is, you know, I always feel inspired when I go to an exhibition and that's a really obvious thing, but it is nice to kind of, even if it's work that you're not, don't necessarily love that you're mm. saying, kind of it does make you think about things a little bit more mm. broadly, I guess. What sort of exhibitions is it about kind of industry stuff or other, like other, within the design space or just oh, general no, it's, art? It's or just anything? general, yeah, general art. I think it's just nice just to even see different perspectives, different, something totally unrelated to what you do yeah. as well. Any um, recommendations? I did actually that we can go to the Marina Branovich at the Royal Academy, which was, which was brilliant actually. I would highly recommend that. Um, and oh, that's probably the most recent thing I've seen. But um, yeah, I think that I do try and get out and see a few things now and just, you know, and go to the, the odd talk when I can. But I guess it's sort of, they're sort of just starting up again, aren't they? But yeah, um, yeah, it's just not, and even, you know, whether it's people kind of doing the similar thing to you, just to, mm. you know, I guess like this podcast, just to chat about other people's processes and their journeys as well and their experiences is, is always good. And um, what about kind of competition and looking over the fence at what, your competitors are doing do you feel that you've got you know some you know other agencies or individuals that you compare yourself to or you kind of look just see what they're up to or you might come up against the same people in in yeah. pictures or are you just you know focused on you yeah obviously we do kind of keep a bit of an eye out or you know often we do come up against the same agencies for um pictures um so yeah, you often you can't help but have a bit of a look and sort of say, oh God, well, they've done some great work and yeah. you know, wish we'd done that, you know, or whatever. So um, yeah, I guess we're aware of, or I'm aware of, you know, other studios who are kind of in our space as well. Um, but I don't know, you kind of, I probably do stay pretty focused on what we're doing and just make sure that we're doing good work. And, you know, and often when we're writing proposals and things, we probably, you know, lots we don't get and it's always trying to understand why is it, price is it you know is there a better way of kind of trying to win work and mm. all that sort of thing so i think we go through phases and often you don't know you know you don't really know why you don't win some projects and then you know recently we've won loads and you're like what's that what's the, what's right. happened what you are you know, doing differently? It, are things just picking up generally i think they probably are um yeah you just you just don't know do you so so on, on that kind of proposal process it sounds like it's obviously changed a lot from the proposals you were putting out 20 years ago yeah yeah what in your mind now makes a really great proposal? I think we try and be very detailed actually so that a client knows exactly what is expected in each stage and kind of, you know, almost sort of, sometimes we almost do what is not, what they're not getting in that stage. So if it's like, I don't know, mood boards or it's, I don't know, tone of voice work or kind of positioning, you know, there's, we're very clear that there's no creative work in that stage. So just, I think right. clients just like to know, and from our experience, they really just like to know where they're at and sort of almost exactly what is happening in each stage. So our, pro our proposals are quite detailed mm. um, just to make it really clear because I think when everyone knows where they stand and, you know, we do sort of, you know, scheduling and sort of a time plan and, you know, break down the cost very specifically. So, and this, I guess, way of writing proposals has sort of evolved over the last few years just mm. by you know feedback from clients or kind of learnings of you know if you get to a particular stage in a project and they're a bit unclear of you know if we're like well we've had quite a few rounds of amends now and you know and they're like but we didn't discuss that you know like so I think it's just over the years have just got a bit better at you know knowing exactly how to but well I mean, and there's still yeah. ways to improve I think but you know ways that I guess clients sort of I don't know from feedback and just how to structure is that, proposals the best way I think is there kind of one one thing that you do that you feel might kind of pit the competition if you're against a competitor in a in a kind of at pitch stage good question we I mean we don't do free like free pitches we've done a couple right but I actually it's never I don't so you're, know, you're always paid to pitch are you yeah well a couple of times we haven't um and 
I think my Mike's well, I don't know, you know, as a small business, you kind of I recently we mm. did one, I get sort of slightly against my best judgment. I was like this project was so nice. It was a, it was a dream project and so we really wanted to get it. Um, and they wanted, you know, like a sort of creative work up front as part of the proposal. Okay. And, you know, you're always like, I, I never think it's a great way to start a relationship with a client just because mm. I think they don't value the work if you do it for free at the beginning. And, you know, we sent in, you know, we really pulled out all the stops and did this kind of presentation. And then they didn't, you know, even acknowledge the, you know, you just kind of think that's sort of why we don't, we yeah. don't do yeah. it, you know. And then you don't know, you might yeah. be up, they might be asking 20 agencies to do the same thing. I think being very clear in our proposals, I think it's been, it's really helps. I think clients appreciate that. I guess it shows a, a, a confidence and a maturity that you know your work, you value your creativity. Yeah. Um, and you know, you know, the structure that the project needs and the client needs. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know whether you, you probably come across the same thing. If you haven't done, because we work in quite a few sectors, we might be approached about a project where we haven't got much experience in that sector so that I think often makes clients a bit nervous even though the process is often the same yeah. it's not we haven't specifically got yeah. work in that sector so you know sometimes that can be an advantage because they're mm. actually looking for you know fresh eyes and then sometimes it just you know they it makes them a bit nervous because they they haven't you know they're not seeing exactly the same yeah. thing in your portfolio so um a few times that whether we've ended up getting the job they've actually then I think been really kind of pleased that they've gone with an agency who can bring a fresh take on it so how have you got around that in the past where someone may want to work with you but they're not your portfolio is not exactly what they're looking for in terms of you don't work with the exact same sector or whatever before how do you kind of reassure the client that you can still do it because it's a, it's a problem that we've had a couple of times as well you do your homework a bit I guess before any of the you know the initial meetings so that you feel like even though you don't have in your portfolio doesn't show that particular kind of work in that sector at least you can kind of talk about it a bit more confidently and often I think it is we do play on that actually it is good if they're looking for something a bit different then it actually is good to go to someone who can come at it you know as I said with kind of fresh pair of eyes and I mean you know sometimes it works sometimes they do go back to who they've used before yeah. or so I don't, I, don't know, I don't think we have a set way of getting around that I mm. think we just you know I think it's a lot, a lot about the chemistry in the meeting as well, isn't it? If you kind of connect in that first meeting and they kind of like what they hear and the way you work, then that can sometimes win over the fact that you maybe haven't got exactly that thing in your portfolio. So I don't know what the magic answer yeah. really is, but sometimes we get the project, sometimes we don't. So, And often you never really know why. It's like I said, is it price? Is it kind of they've seen a particular project? Often it's recommendation. We get recommended a lot. So then... I think that goes a really long way when someone recommends you. I mean, even if we've been yeah. recommended for people, like if, if you trust that person who's recommended someone else, you, that goes a long way as well. Mm. So just going back to the, you know, being paid to pitch or not, when, so if someone approaches you, they want to potentially, you know, work with you or go through that process and they ask for a proposal, is that when you say, oh, we only do paid proposals? I mean, to be honest, I would say 90% of the time we don't get asked for creative work up front. It is, okay. a, it's not actually for us, and I don't know what, what it's like with you guys, but for us, it re it's quite rare that we are asked right. to do that. And is that an, an industry-wide thing, do you think? Um, not necessarily. I think, depending on the scale of the jobs, I think maybe the type of work. I mean, and actually the other thing is a lot of our work is repeat work. So we've obviously already got a relationship right. with the client. Yeah, I mean, it's quite rare. And actually, like I said, a couple of times I've I've done it and then... You know, I've always slightly regretted it afterwards because, mm. I mean, obviously, if you get the work, then you don't. But I just kind of think it is sort of devalues the process mm. if you're just doing it for free a bit. It's it's not even about doing it for free necessarily. It's about establishing a good working relationship, I think, with the client. Yeah, we will get briefs in and we might come up with some you know top level concepts, perhaps two or three for a, to yeah. answer a brief in different ways. And there is a lot of, you know, of the studio's time the team's yeah. time a lot of creative goes into it and when you don't win it it's obviously a real shame and you yeah. know you feel a bit deflated but i wonder perhaps if we took a leaf out of your book and we were a bit firmer with that and let, did less of that creative up front knowing that it needs yeah. to be valued i think it's tricky isn't it because in some sectors like is that's the norm really mm. so unless you do it then you're not and you even kind of need to looking. show the client this is what you'll be buying and they're like okay yeah. great 
we'll have a video like that, please. Yeah. Probably my viewpoint changes on it a bit depending on how busy we're. If we're really busy, then mm. I would just say no. You know, it's yeah. like we don't need that project. And what, you know, we've got these pay clients that we should be giving our attention to. When you're quiet, you, you know, you're slightly more open minded to it, I guess. But I think I'm quite lucky. A lot of the work we get, we're not actually asked to do it anyway. Um, but yeah, I think like if, if, if it's kind of common in your mm. world, then you can't, it's hard to say no, isn't it? It's yeah. hard because otherwise... You don't want to rule yourself out. Yeah. But on a couple of occasions, we've agreed like a, a nominal fee, really, even just to do some initial thinking. And sometimes that's the way around it. So they're not kind of outlaying a huge amount or not committing to the full process. You're doing mm. some initial work just to... Sometimes we've done that and that sort of worked okay but i'm not totally against it but i just think sometimes it doesn't actually make for the best long-term working relationship or i like say if they've asked 20 companies to do it then your chances of getting the job are so slim anyway so yeah you might just be mm. shopping around for ideas and yeah yeah, yeah. they yeah. probably might do it in house anyway yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and that's the other thing you're like well they might use these ideas anyway yeah yeah and what can you do you know so, so. Charlie, the, the studio has been running 20 years you must have had some highs and some lows, some ups and some downs. How, how have you kind of found that, that roller coaster? What have, what have some of the biggest challenges been? Generally, or maybe I've forgotten them. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, it's been pretty, actually a pretty smooth ride, really. I mean, sometimes it's tricky situations with clients. I mean, to be honest, generally we haven't had a project that's totally bombed where you've just, okay. like, they've hated wow. the work and then, you know, you're a bit sort of in that tricky position. Generally, we've always worked through it, but mm. we have had some quite challenging clients where they're hard to work with and they make the atmosphere in the studio is a bit, you know, people don't really necessarily want to work on the project because the client's quite tricky, but generally we've been really lucky. We've only had a couple of those. Mm. So in those scenarios, as the as the leader, yeah, how do you get the team in the right headspace or get the morale right that, you know, you can tackle those those challenges i think it's probably making sure that we do have some other projects going on in the studio that everyone's really enjoying so you're kind of even though that we've got this one and we need to finish it or maybe it's sort of slightly paying the bills you know like because you do need you know yeah you kind of just making sure that we've got some other nice things going on or maybe shielding the team a bit from interactions with the client if they're a tricky client and then just myself what, so you might might so step in yeah, or I'll do just more of the meetings with kind of my project manager and maybe shield the designers a bit mm. from, you know, if they're a really tricky client or it's just making sure that everyone's got... I think generally everyone always has something really nice to work on, even if there's some other things that okay. you know, aren't so enjoyable. But actually, to be fair, most of our projects are actually quite fun to work on. It's only the odd one that's is difficult. But um, I think, I guess, you know, COVID was obviously, like for all of us, was a challenging time. Or actually for us, it was after... We were really busy during COVID, and then after that, we had, that's when we had a bit more challenging time. Mm. So, um, I guess it's just trying to find ways to keep morale up a bit, and you know, because everyone was a bit nervous during that time. But we seem to have generally it's, it's sort of been okay, really. I right. think we've just you're just seamlessly <laughs> making good decisions and doing oh, the I right thing. <laughs> Do you know? I don't I don't know about that especially, but I think I've just got a really good team, and we. Okay. I think I've always been surrounded by people's opinion I trust and you know, who kind of work hard and loyal and we've, you know, it's sort of, it's give and take, isn't mm. it? I think I try and be a good boss and I don't know, we we'll, we just had, it just seems to work really. And I think I've been very lucky, you know. Must be more than luck though, surely. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something in that, <laughs> yeah. very modest. So in terms of kind of creating that team atmosphere, it sounds like you've established something that's really nice and people enjoy working with you. Yeah. Is that a proactive you know, I'm sure you're not going in every day being like, how can I make sure the atmosphere is right? But is that, do you believe it just comes from you as the the founder, the leader, the creative director, or is it something that you've had to work at? I don't know. We've always had quite a, you know, though, so I guess our biggest, we were about, there was about nine of us. Um, but now we're down to sort of five. Um, I think it's always just the personalities in the team. And, you know, we always, there's always a lot of kind of, banter and chat and you know we even though two of our team are mostly remote as I mm. said you know we do sort of check in a lot during the day so there's always a good kind of I guess camaraderie and kind of you know atmosphere so sort of, even though it's not we're not in the same room um and we do try and do you know go to talks and sort of 
do, you know do stuff together a bit yeah. and yeah. you know I guess just keep it lighthearted a bit really mm. um, and I guess as a boss I always try and be quite approachable like if you know if anything's sort of people have any issues or I don't know things that they're not happy about I would sort of try and be very open so that people can kind of just come and talk to me and if there's a right. problem we can kind of sort it out before it becomes yeah. an issue sounds like um, a nice place to work well hopefully <laughs> I think that you know I'm obviously speaking on behalf of my team but I think everyone enjoys enjoys it and yeah we seem to try of I guess if there's any issues we try and sort them out mm. early on and yeah I think everyone seems reasonably happy but I hope anyway <laughs> yeah well, yeah who knows what's going on behind yeah that. yeah and and do you think that that is reflected in the work having the, a, a good kind of relaxed friendly collaborative atmosphere does that make the work yeah. more creative and, and better I think so I guess you know probably as creatives we all probably produce better work when we're kind of enjoying you know enjoying the process and the environment we're working in but mm. yeah I think it does yeah it feeds through to the work I think definitely doing something right oh so in terms of the kind of the more looking to the future of the studio do you feel you've got it in a nice space sounds like you have what are the the kind of longer term plans if i'm totally honest i don't really make long-term plans i just, <laughs> just kind of go you know yeah i've been going with it for this long and it seems to have been mm. working okay and i kind of i so maybe that was sort of COVID, COVID as well a little bit because that's not always been the case charlie when you you know you set out and it was sort of oh i'm a freelancer but we're cool it yeah set up as a company i mean that's my personality and it's just really. kind yeah. of gone from there was there ever a moment and you thought we're gonna aim for a particular size of revenue or? to be honest that's just not really the way i roll actually i just sort of <laughs> tend to kind of go with the flow a little bit yeah. and i don't really plan ahead i sort of you know i plan ahead as much as like have we got enough work for the next few months and mm. you know is everything okay? And is, you know, is everyone yeah. on the team okay? Are we all good? You know, kind of, but I don't really think, oh, this is where I want to be in a few years time. I think I just, that, I just don't think like that really. I kind of, you know, go with, go with things as, as they are and just see, see what happens really. And maybe that's not Seems really, to be working. It's, yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, I guess I do think our industry is, is changing massively at the moment. And, you know, you do kind of wonder where it's going to be in the next mm. 10 years. What, what are the changes? Well, I guess things like, you know, I think it's, you know, when we're costing on jobs, you know, there's a lot of the stuff you can get, you know, you can get logos done online or like AI coming in, mm. all these things that I guess lots of people can have all the software and, you know, you don't necessarily need to have kind of gone to art school and done, you know what I mean? It feels like it's, everyone can kind of be a designer a little bit now. So in some ways it's harder to justify I wouldn't even say our oh, fees are that high, but I still think it's harder to justify you know, the amount of time. And, you know, we put a lot of effort in and really craft the work we do. Mm. And obviously that does come at a, a cost. And like I said, I don't think it's, you know, compared to other studios out there, I don't think we're necessarily that expensive, but I think it's harder to kind of justify those fees sometimes because of the way our industry is changing. So mm. I don't know where it's going to be in... 10 years time that's a bit daunting you know and AI and everything coming yeah. in and all that sort of stuff it's just like you know so how, how do you feel about AI because it's as you say you can go on online and type in a few prompts and get a you know it spits out a logo yeah is AI something you're using as a studio or sometimes for if we're trying to kind of scamp something up and just look at what an illustration could look like as a bit of a placeholder or mm. you know, we might just we've dabbled a little bit but and I guess it feels like and I'm not an expert on it but I guess it feels like at the moment it's sort of you can't let really use it for commercial purposes so it's fine for kind of just doing things internally but obviously that landscape is totally changing so I don't really know what the Hmm. impact that is going to be on, on all of us really I guess in the kind of yeah. creative field like how so it's the gonna... plan just roll with it as you say and, or you're gonna I'm afraid so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just you know and I don't know like I do really love love what I do and would have to keep doing this for as long as I can so you know as long as there's clients out there wanting the work and maybe in the next few years it will sort of change a bit but yeah I, do, I don't really plan ahead I know that's maybe not the best you know business way of looking at things but it seems to work for me so so just in terms of the the business side of things yeah. do you have help with that are you are you kind of looking at bottom lines and margins and 
making sure there's you know yeah, I mean, the bills are being paid i guess we do kind of look ahead to we look at it and kind of do a bit of planning see where we're at how's the next quarter who's, looking who's we? so my project manager okay or camp manager and i we sort of you know she's sort of brilliant at all that stuff so we do really sit down and look at you know maybe reflect back on what last year looked like and how things are looking for this quarter the next quarter um and really for me it's just knowing the next few months where you know we can pay all the bills pay everyone's salaries you know we have a little bit of a buffer i guess so no we'll be okay if we weren't mm. if we didn't have any work for six months we'd be okay you know so there's i guess there's a bit of security in that but um like i said i don't plan massively far ahead because i just think there's it's, things just change all the time how do you and i'm not looking to grow the agency especially i kind of really enjoy actually the science we're at now um so yeah i think it's just i don't yeah look that far ahead or um but from planning point of view just sort of make sure that things are looking okay in this quarter yeah. and next quarter and that's about as much planning as i do probably yeah well it sounds like it's it's definitely working and means that you can concentrate on the work yeah and the clients and doing brilliant work yeah definitely. So like final that. thoughts charlie if if someone's you know listening to this they're a similar place to where you were a few years ago what what would you say to them well, as I've probably touched on loads, I think it's really about building a network, not even in your immediate team, but kind of a network of people that you enjoy working with, that you kind of trust and, you you know, like the quality of their work. So I think it's all about the people that I work with. It's been mm. just such a huge part. Um, I think it's, I got, we got to a stage where we were, well, quite big. We were sort of nine people and I found that hard. I mean, everyone's different, but for me, I ended up having to take on projects I didn't necessarily want to do just because there was a huge salary bill to pay. Mm. So I kind of, I think we, we grew a bit too quickly. Um, I say quickly, we did, in, in that in the space of time, we I took on probably too many people, didn't really have quite enough work. So I think it was, it's just kind of knowing where you're at, I guess, and just sort of not being too, I don't know what the word is, but not being too reactive, I guess. Um, and I think just trying to do work you enjoy. Like if, I mean, sometimes it's not always an option you just need to take on the projects but mm. generally I've always really enjoyed the projects and the clients we've worked with so I sort of yeah if you can if you can do that I think it's sort of you know and keep then you kind of keep enjoying the process and enjoying the work um but yeah I think trying to build a team around you who you trust I think and work well with that's not as a bit willy I think but no, yeah I mean, that's great there's yeah. definitely a lot a lot in there you know, and I think it was really interesting what you said earlier that you wish you'd perhaps made that first hire sooner because it yeah. is a when you are you know starting a business or starting to run your own business, it's very that first hire yeah. is a huge, it's a big milestone. But I, you know, when you get it right, I don't think you ever look back. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that was probably the biggest mistake I made early on was just not doing that sooner because I actually didn't enjoy. It. I was not enjoying it because mm. it was so stressful, and. You know, if you're just, if you're the only creative, you're doing the same, you think of things and you have your own aesthetic, so you end up doing, you're not really challenging the kind of creative output, it's sort mm. of, it's your own vision, isn't it? So it was really nice to get other people in. So I think I would have done that sooner, actually. And then once I start, once I took on the first employee and it was, you know, it then was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Why didn't I <laughs> yeah. do this sooner? And, and actually then this sort of project management sort of role was... Mm. That definitely was the one of the best things I did, actually. And then people are doing the things that they're good at, so you're playing to people's strengths, really. Um, so, yeah, I think, guess, finding the right people, bringing the right people in. And sometimes actually outsource, like, we don't necessarily have all the skills internally in our team. So, you know, working with people external to our studio, um, if there's something on a job that, you know, you kind of know we can sort of do, but actually isn't our skill set, like working with external people, knowing when to bring, you know, bring other... Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. So if you weren't creative director of Charlie Smith Design, what would you be doing if you had a, a different career? Where, where would you be? I mean, fun enough, I always wanted to be like a set designer or a theatre designer. That would have been my other path. So okay. I don't know where I'd be now if I was doing yeah. that. And yeah, in terms of create other creative disciplines, that might, probably would have been where I would have gone. Right. Um, or yeah, or done something totally different. I don't yeah, know. and if but it was outside of the creative industries... I don't know. I mean, I love like being in the mountains, doing something outdoors. I, mean, I don't know what that would be. I don't know what career that would be, but yeah, something. Um, I don't know more outdoors. Guide. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's all we've got time for, Charlie. Thank okay. you so much for coming in. No, well, thanks for um, having me. That was great. Thank great you. Great chat. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank you.